Hello everybody and welcome back to Spreading Science. My name is Gustavo Herz Hooper. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the myths about the origin of HIV or AIDS. Since I made some videos about HIV or AIDS origin some months ago, people don't stop criticizing and leaving comments, for example, saying, I saw a documentary or I heard that HIV or AIDS comes from this or that. So these are only myths, and I'm going to tell you all about it on this video. If you want to see the real origin of HIV or AIDS, see the video that I did about it below on the description. You can find the link. But first of all, I would like to ask you to please give the video a like, share, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell, and follow me also on Facebook and Instagram. Welcome to this new video. Various marginal theories have arisen to speculate about supposed alternative origins for the human immunodeficiency virus, HIV, and the acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, AIDS, with claims ranging from it being due to accidental exposure to supposedly purposeful acts. Several inquiries and investigations have been carried out as a result, and each of these theories has consequently been determined to be based on unfounded and or false information. HIV has been shown to have evolved from or be closely related to the simian immunodeficiency virus HIV in West Central Africa sometime in the early 20th century. Smallpox vaccination theory. In 1987, there was some consideration given to the possibility that the AIDS epidemic may have been triggered by the mass vaccination campaign which eradicated smallpox. An article in the Times suggested this, attributing to an unnamed advisor to WHO the quote, I believe the smallpox vaccine theory is the explanation to the explosion of AIDS. It is now thought that the smallpox vaccine causes serious complications for people who already have impaired immune systems, and the Times article described the case of a military recruit with dormant HIV who died within months of receiving it but no citation was provided regarding people who did not previously have HIV. Currently, HIV is considered to be a contraindication for the smallpox vaccine, both for an infected person and their sexual partners and household members. Some conspiracy theorists propose an expanded hypothesis in which the smallpox vaccine was deliberately contaminated with HIV. In contrast, a research article was published in 2010 suggesting that it might have been the actual eradication of smallpox and the subsequent ending of the mass vaccination campaign that contributed to the sudden emergence of HIV. The theory was the possibility that immunization against smallpox might play a role in providing an individual with some degree of protection to subsequent HIV infection and or disease progression. Regardless of the effects of the smallpox vaccine itself, its use in practice in Africa is one of the categories of unsterile injections that may have contributed to the spread and mutation of the immunodeficiency viruses. Hepatitis B vaccine theory. The dermatologist Alan Cantwell, in self-published books entitled AIDS and the Doctors of Death, an inquiry into the origins of the AIDS epidemic, 1988, and queer blood, the secret AIDS genocide plot. 1993, said that HIV is a genetically modified organism developed by U.S. government scientists. The virus was then introduced into the population through hepatitis B, via the hepatitis B vaccine, experiments performed on gay and bisexual men between 1978 and 1981 in major U.S. cities. Cantwell claims that these experiments were directed by Wolf Smunes, and that there was an ongoing government cover-up of the origins of the AIDS epidemic. Similar theories have been advanced by Robert B. Strecker, Mathilde Krim, and Milton William Cooper. Oral polio vaccine OPV theory. In the 1999 version of his OPV AIDS hypothesis, Edward Hooper proposed that early batches of the oral polio vaccine, or OPV, grown in cultures of chimpanzee kidney cells infected with a chimpanzee virus were the original source of HIV in Central Africa. A vial of the batch most strongly implicated by Hooper was found in storage in the UK. An analysis found no HIV or SIV sequences or chimpanzee cellular components, 
but did find traces of macaque mitochondria. Analysis of five samples of OPV in storage at the Weissar Institute, including one from a batch used in the Belgian Congo between 1958 and 1960, found on chimpanzee DNA. Other molecular biology and phylogenetic studies also contradict the hypothesis, and scientific consensus regards it as disproven. A 2004 article in the journal Nature described the hypothesis as refuted. Additional theories. These theories generally attribute HIV's origin to the US government or its contractors. Created at Fort Detrick. Jacob Seagal, a professor at Humboldt University in the East Germany, proposed that HIV was engineered at a US military laboratory at Fort Detrick by splicing together two other viruses, Visna and HTLV-1. According to this theory, the new virus, created between 1977 and 1978, was tested on prison inmates who had volunteered for the experiment in exchange for early release. He further suggested that it was through these prisoners that the virus was spread to the population at large. At the end of Cold War, former KGB agents Vasily Mitrokin and Oleg Kordievsky independently revealed that the Fort Detrick hypothesis was a propaganda operation devised by the KGB's first chief directorate condemned Operation Infection. This revelation was later supported by officer Gunther Borensack of Section X of East Germany's main directorate for reconnaissance. It is known that Sigal was in close contact with the Russian KGB officers and Mitrokin mentioned him as a central asset of the operation. It is not entirely clear whether Sigal pursued the hypothesis independently on his own accord or whether he was simply following orders. Sigal himself always denied the latter and kept pursuing the hypothesis even after the operation had been cancelled and the Cold War had ended. Conspiracy to decrease the population. In Behold, a Pale Horse, 1991, radio broadcaster and author Milton William Cooper proposed that AIDS was the result of a conspiracy to decrease the population of blacks, Hispanics, and homosexuals. Prevalence of conspiracy beliefs. According to Phil Wilson, executive director of the Black AIDS Institute in Los Angeles, Conspiracy theories are becoming a barrier to the prevention of AIDS since people start to believe that no matter what measures they take, they can still be prone to contracting this disease. A 2005 study suggests this makes them less careful when engaging in practices that put them at risk because they believe there is no point. Nearly half of the 500 African Americans surveyed said that HIV is a man-made. More than one quarter said that they believe that AIDS was producing a government laboratory, and 12% believed it was created and spread by the CIA. At the same time, 75% said they believed medical and public health agencies are working to stop the spread of AIDS in black communities. As you could see on this video, most of the myths about HIV or AIDS origin concern the American government who created this virus to kill populations, but these are only myths. Another one is that the vaccines are the reason for that, different vaccines. Obviously, people, a lot of people are against vaccines and they, give the, and they are blaming them for the creation of HIV or AIDS. If you want to see the real origin of HIV or AIDS, please follow the link below and see that video that I made about it. If you like the video, please give it a like, share, subscribe to the channel and follow me also on Facebook and Instagram. This would help me a lot. Thank you very much and see you next time.